Some of you may have noticed I'm quite old. So Brady wasn't in the least bit surprised that I never heard of a drink which is popular with young people called a Jaeger bomb. The idea is that you fill a small glass, so-called shot glass, with this alcoholic drink, Jägermeister, and then you drop it into a bigger glass that contains an energy drink like Red Bull. Everything mixes and then you drink it quickly. To me, both of them smell worse than medicine and I can't understand why anybody should want to drink it. I went to a shop and bought some. Heaven knows what they thought of an aged professor buying a bottle of Jägermeister and four cans of Red Bull. I didn't ask them. Brady had an idea. He wanted to turn a Jäger bomb into really something a bit more explosive. He and Neil thought about it and they decided that they would take a glass of Jägermeister and onto the bottom of it would attach a lump of an alkali metal, sodium or potassium, and drop the glass into the Red Bull. We began with sodium, dropped it in. It was a bit of a flop. Not much different from ordinary sodium, bubbling, a little flash, and a small pop at the end. So we thought we would up the game and put in potassium. Chemically, this experiment is really an alkali metal plus water. I don't think that the sugar or the ethanol in the alcohol will make any difference. In fact, alkali metals react with ethanol very much more slowly than they do with water. So it's a sort of disguised alkali metal water experiment. Now, what I thought or expected beforehand, because I was told it was going to happen and I went there to watch, was that the shot glass would go in and then it would be blown out and would rise up again like a rocket. And so, in fact, I even persuaded Neil to put a ruler behind the uh, experiment on the wall of the fume cupboard. This couldn't possibly have happened because the reaction with alkali metals and water is a very violent and quick one. Whereas if you want to project a, something like a bullet from a gun, you need a much slower, steady reaction where there's a build-up of gas that pushes the thing out. So the first Jaeger bomb with potassium dropped in. There was an enormous bang and the beaker was gone. So we had to do it again. And what was interesting is the second time with potassium it was also a flop. <laughs> Potassium has quite a low melting point, so as soon as it warms up and the water, if it can float off, it will. If the potassium is on the surface, then half of it's sticking up into the air and half of it's in the water. And so when a violent reaction takes place, much of the shock wave can be dispersed in the air because it's much easier, for example, to move your hand through air than it is through water. <coughs> Being a glutton for punishment, Neil cleaned up the fume cupboard and we tried a third experiment, which again went with a really quite satisfying bang.
Most of the beaker was broken into some pretty small pieces. The largest piece that was left was this piece here, which corresponds to the rim of the beaker. I haven't seen such a destroyed piece of glassware since I made a big mistake when I was a PhD student and I turned the wrong tap and put a high pressure of gas into a glass bulb and it went bang and disappeared apart from a couple of pieces that got stuck in my hair. Slide this one in, so just slide it away and back up again. And there we have, oh, nearly two inches maybe of liquid fluorine. You can go right up, That's, there's no problem with that. Yeah, I'm really surprised. I thought it would be pale green and it's really quite dark yellow.